This episode sponsored by Lake Monster Details, producing the Don's Light and Magic Legacy line of parts, offering upgrade parts and decals for accuracy, special effects, and lighting. Visit www.lakemonsterdetails.com and make it glow. Also sponsored by GCALS, producing aftermarket replacement decals and custom quality graphics for your favorite spaceships. Visit www.gcals.company.site and add some personalization to your sci-fi models today. Also sponsored by Mask Design, boldly going where no masking kit has gone before. Take your model to the next level of detail and accuracy with a masking kit from Mask Design. Visit Mask Design on Facebook or click the ordering link in the notes below the video. What's up, fellow modelers? Will here. Welcome to the Engine Share. This episode of the 1350 Enterprise A Ian Lawrence Tribute Build, we're going to get the bridge and the BC deck done. And uh, we're going to get that iridescent painting done around the BC deck as well. But I uh, just want to mention uh, there were a couple segments, the last couple segments of this video. I didn't realize my microphone was unplugged. So unlike before where people were complaining about uh, whether asked whether or not my microphone was plugged in all the way, it wasn't plugged in. So if it's a little crackly, I apologize. When I process the video, I'll try to tone it down a bit if I can. But uh, if it's a little loud, sorry. Um, hopefully it doesn't hurt your ears too bad. But uh, anyway, without further ado, let's get into the build. Give me a minute. I'll put you on the bench. We'll get to work. All right, so here's what I've done with the uh, the bridge and trying to uh, and making sure I get this lit up. Um, first thing I did was I've installed a uh, SMD at the back here uh, for my strobe, my strobe light on the top of the back of the bridge here. Uh, the other thing I did was I don't uh, the saucer sitting over there, but I put a uh, a three millimeter SMD or no a three millimeter LED angled towards the back of the uh the bridge here so it lights up the docking ring and the lights on either side of the docking ring so those get lit up and uh oops the last thing it's okay i gotta repaint it anyway uh the last thing i did was i installed a wide angle let me get in the focus here smd at the front of the bridge where i want that spotlight to shine and i've installed it as high as i can get it and still have it shine through the opening you can see it right there uh, that way it still shines through the opening and uh, then i came in and i light blocked everything with tulip just to make because there's a lot of light in here so it, it takes a little extra light blocking than what uh, you may typically use now the other thing i noticed by testing this is that i do need to get this to raise a little bit because of uh, how shallow you see these openings aren't very high at all uh, and the way i'm going to do that is i've got some uh, some some polystyrene here a polystyrene sheet it's I don't remember what the exact thickness is but it's pretty thick you can see um, it's one of the thicker ones you can get from evergreen at uh, Hobby Lobby and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit it down I'll put the bridge on top and I'm just gonna trace a rough outline of the bridge Excuse my head. I gotta get in here though. All right, and that gives me a rough idea of how. Oh, I'm out of focus. Of uh, where I need to trim this at to get the bridge to uh, to sit on this. It don't matter if it, if it doesn't matter if it fits perfectly because what I'm gonna do is come back. I'm gonna have to probably fill around this between the bridge and the top of this and sand it to get it to to blend nicely with the bridge. And which is fine. I should have done this before I did any of the work on the bridge. Um, but I didn't I totally forgot didn't think about it uh, but it's okay because I changed paint 
uh, the white paint and I did want to redo this blue with the uh, the, the powder blue that uh, I got from uh, Gary's paint mixtures over at Mass Design for the Grissom. I'm going to use their powder blue so I do need to change that um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix some of that up anyway and redo this so it doesn't matter if, if uh, I've got to add that part and do some sanding to get it to fill. Plus this um, if we're going to be a rivet counter <laughs> if you want if you want to be a rivet counter much like I am sometimes there's supposed to be a bit of a, a flat spot here before this gets this uh, this block here this gray block isn't supposed to sit directly on the top of the BC deck so it's going to give me that little bit of gap I need there anyway um, so it's not a big deal I'm not too worried about it, it won't take me that long to do but uh, I'm gonna work this up I'm gonna cut this and basically I'm just gonna take my scissors trim this out close I don't need to be exact like I said because um, I do want to leave a little bit of this oh, that went flying <laughs> a little bit of this to sand so I can blend it in with the bridge if I cut it too short um, and don't leave something to, to blend it in with and I'll, I'll have an uneven space there this will sit a little recessed from the bottom of the bridge so I, I don't want that I want to cut this out just a little bit bigger than my line right, I've got that and then my bridge I will glue directly on top of this and you can see I've got a little bit you can see a little bit of polystyrene still sticking out there uh, but uh, that's what I want I may trim it a little bit more I don't want that much to where I have to do a ton of sanding but uh, I'll get this trimmed down to where I want it and uh, get it glued in place and uh, then we'll come back and take a look after that all right so here's where I'm at I've got um, that sheet styrene uh, glued to the bottom of this and I've been working on uh, getting this blended in and uh, you can see this side here where I've, I've just about got it to where I want to try put a little once I sand some more, try to get just a little bit of primer around this edge and see how it's looking. But um, basically, once I get this glued on, I cut out, well, actually, before I glued this on, I cut out an opening. That way, all my wires can come through and it's not uh, creating any problems. Uh, but then once I got this glued in place, I start cutting away at it and uh, I open up the light ports. I haven't opened this one up yet, so you can see it's still, I still got to worry. But you see how, how thin that opening is um, until you you know put some sheet styrene in here and now you can see it's a bit higher you can see the white sheet styrene there still got a little more work to do around this yet but um, it's coming along pretty good the uh, one thing I'm working on too with this part this aftermarket part it's a little inaccurate well it's a couple of things been inaccurate I've been talking about but one of the other issues I had was this uh, this outer edge here um, as the kit part comes, it's it's straight down on this front edge here, and it should be a little bit of a slant to it. So you can see on this side, I don't know how well you can tell, but I've been working on uh, making that more of a slant instead of just straight down like this side. And I think you can see it a little bit on there. Um, you can see this uh, this panel line here, how much closer it is to the edge here versus this side here. And I've been working on that, basically just taking my file at an angle and working a uh, more of a slant to that so it looks a little bit a little bit closer to uh, what the studio model is in that respect but uh, that's what I'm working on is basically just getting these openings just being careful when you cut these open because I'm probably going to use a little bit of putty here um, where I cut the sheet styrene just a little short when I did this opening I cut a little bit too wide and uh, I think it's going to be a notch there uh, for light to come through so I'm gonna have to work work on that. Maybe put a little putty in there and sand it some more and get it get it flat. But uh, it's coming along decent. It's the, the openings are definitely bigger and higher, and that should help project my light out. Um, actually, it's going to help the light shine closer to the BC deck because you're raising it up above that edge of the uh, the front edge of the BC deck. But um, so I'm gonna get these cut, finish getting these open. I'm gonna keep working on these. Try to get these slants. The slant of a little bit more in the front here sloped a little more and uh, we'll come back and take a look in a minute all right so here's where I'm at uh, with my my lighting setup as far as the spotlight now I've got this uh, 
this all pretty much sanded and smoothed around the edges but before I paint it I want to do a light test and just make sure of uh, where we're at with it in case I needed to do anything else to it but uh, I need to get this set right where I want it and let's turn this light off and see where we're at all right, there we go. That's not bad. It actually uh, hits pretty pretty much where I want it to. It would be nice to uh, catch that first phaser bank a little more and get that light cast. I think we still might catch it, but uh, yeah, that's lighting up nice. I think it's going to do do very well. Actually, the camera's not picking it up as well as it is in person. I actually had to bump the uh, the brightness up on the camera settings just to get it to pick this up. Because uh, if I bump my brightness down to a normal level you don't really see much of it and it definitely is lighting better in person than what you're seeing there so just to give you a better idea i bumped the brightness up a little bit so you could see where it's actually hitting that and that's a closer representation of where it's lighting at so it turned out nice that that's going to work um you can see i've got my my strobe light is lit it's constant on right now because i'm just testing it and then we can take a look at the back here and we see that ring around Let's see if i can focus here see that ring oh, too far that ring around the door there around the up uh, the door the uh, docking hatch is lighting up nicely I've got light coming from those semicircles and I've got light let me try turning the con the uh, brightness down now it's kind of overpowering but uh, yeah you can see it there you can see the ring around the door those two semicircles are lit up and uh, actually I've got a position that where it's supposed to be and they won't get that bright spot there we go so I've got to get this down I've got to take care of the light leaks around it but I've got to get this bridge repainted first you can see the officers dining room in there don't know if I can get a uh, better image of that dining room let me see if I can focus this well enough to, to be able to actually make anything out in there I think the I think the light in there which really isn't as bright as it looks on camera I think that's just going to overpower it and you're not really going to be able to see anything inside that dining area but uh, it turned out nice I like it um, I've got that chandelier in there the only the only issue with the chandelier is it kind of blocks that back wall you can't really see you can't really see anything on it on that back wall but uh, other than that, it's turning out nice. Um, I like the way it's lighting up. And uh, I think that'll work. I'm going to uh, get this bridge repainted and uh, get it in position. Get it. I'm ready to fix this in position. And we'll come back and see where we're going next. All right, guys. So I've got this bridge ready to attach. What I've done is I've taken uh, some of my perfect plastic putting. I've just put a thin bead around the outer edge of the bridge uh, that way to help light block without me having to do a whole lot after I get this on there and then on the inside uh, of this edge that I've got from this extra styrene I've added I've just put a little bit of uh, my thick CA glue and I don't want a whole lot on there because I don't want it to spew out when I push this down I want the uh, ideally the uh, uh, well, oh, <laughs> ideally the perfect plastic putty will uh, set into place first and then when I push it down hopefully that perfect plastic putty is going to sit in there and fill in any light gaps I might have and then any of the pl perfect plastic putty sorry I'm getting my head in the way uh, any of the perfect plastic putty that oozes out like right here um, I can clean up with a Q-tip and water. That way, uh, I'm not messing anything else up. All right, I think that's about where it needs to be. I have to put another coat of white on this before I can uh, start working on the rest of the pearlescence here. Make sure it's down on there good. And. Uh, so not only the, the CA glue, but also this perfect plastic putty will help hold this in place. And uh, I won't, so just that little bit of uh, perfect plastic putty came out. There's a little bit around the edges. I'll take a Q-tip and clean that up. And uh, she's mounted in place. 
So that's it. That part is done, the top of the BC deck. Uh, my next step is going to be to come down and add the pearlescence around the bottom edge of the uh, BC deck here. And then I can start with the first set of Gary's masks from Mask Design. Um, I can start on those around this inner circle here and get those, those lines all done. And then I'll be ready to uh, start working on the wider set. But before I start working on the, uh, the wider saucer here, I want to at least get this uh, impulse deck ready to go. i got to get the impulse engine in place. And uh, that's going to take a little bit of work. But uh, I want to get that in place. And then before I do the, uh, the main Aztecs on the saucer top, uh, because I will need to add a little more. I've got a couple spots where I've scuffed it on top here from moving it around. So I'm going to have to uh, do another a little bit of a light sanding on this and then add another coat of white on this. But uh, let me get, uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and get that second, that bottom edge of this in pearlescent. Um, and then we'll come back and take a look at it. Hey guys, I'm still working on this, but I figured I'd just show you this. This is kind of my process. Um, so I've got this uh, diagram. Now this is basically Trek modelers, but I've added um, for the, the, the top of the BC deck, I've added a number of colors uh, around here because they didn't have, there's nothing on Trek modelers showing colors around the upper and lower, uh, above and below the gray band, basically. It's just on top of the, very top of the BC deck that uh, they show a couple of it, and it's all gold. And when I looked at the pictures of the student model, to me it looked like there were colors other than gold. So I just kind of mixed in some blue, a little bit of red, um, no green, uh, but it, because I didn't really think I saw any green on top here. Uh, but basically I go around, and whatever the color is, I tape it off, and I spray that color and let it dry. And then I unmask it, remask, do the next color. And the same thing, basically the same way you do uh, all the masks on here, you're, you're going to you know, be doing a lot of masking, unmasking, and, and painting and stuff. But uh, So that's pretty much my process for getting those colors down around the bridge here. And this is the last color I'm going to do. i got to do gold. I've already done blue and red. Uh, so I'm going to do that gold, and we'll come back and take a look at the, fin uh, yeah, the finished product. All right, so here we go. I've got uh, all that painting done. Let me see if I can get a little closer here. And You can see the different colors I've got painted on there. It's turning out really nice. It's nice to have those colors added onto the above and below that gray line on the uh, BC deck. I just think it would look too plain without without that uh, that added those added colors on there that added detail. But uh, so I'm pretty much at the point now where I want to go ahead and get this. Uh, inner circle done, and that means we're moving on to Gary's mask, at least to get that point done. I keep calling them Gary's mask, but they are Gary's mask, but uh, they're from Mask Design. And uh, I'm going to move on to those and at least get that first step done around this ring here. Um, I'm going to mask off this area around here, and the way I'm going to do that is I wish I had some wider. I'm out of the wider tape, but basically I'm going to tape off around this edge all the way around and I had this taped off once but that's uh, then I had to take it off because I came back and repainted decided I want wanted to uh, go with the uh, white primer that uh, Gary demonstrated when he did his and that white primer I've used on the Grissom as well so that way the paints will definitely match uh, between the two that's also why I use the powder blue for the the top area here, and everywhere there's powder blue called for, I'll use the same colors that uh, that Grissom guide gives the mixture for. And uh, that way everything will match when the, I've got the Grissom and this sitting next to each other. Since they're both 1350s, uh, they'll be sitting next to each other. And uh, they will look the same. They will have the same paint scheme. So this is pretty much... Uh, how I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this off. And then I'm going to take my fingernail and I'm going to find that grid line around the top here and just trace it out. And I'm not going to sit here and do all this in camera. I think you get the idea. I'm going to basically trim, trim this tape along this grid line that goes around 
around the bridge here and just find it with my fingernail first that way I'm not cutting I know exactly where I need to run the the blade to uh, to trim this and uh, when you do it you just want to do it real light as light just just enough to get through the tape which doesn't take a whole lot um, to get through uh, because what you don't want to do is create a deeper groove or uh, really tear up um, the hole any so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna trim this and uh, we'll come back and I will show you where we're at I'm basically just gonna run this line around and take my hobby knife and then pull it around that circle so give me a minute and I will come back and take a look there you go so I've got the uh, that first set of masks put on for the ring around the uh, BC deck here now I'm doing this a little bit out of order because I think it's intended to do the uh, the main Aztecs first and then do this after that. But uh, I kind of want to, like I said, I kind of want to work from the top down and do this. And then after I get this done, I'm going to move on to getting the impulse deck squared away, ready to go. And then I can do my Aztecs on top. So I've got this ready to go. I've got the color guide ready to go. And uh, it's just a matter of peeling, painting, replacing the mask working the way around. I'm not going to go through it step by step because if you want step by step you can check out Gary's uh, videos that he's done uh, for this masking kit. So I'm going to get this painted up and when we come back hopefully we should have a finished product and we'll take a look at it. Alright guys here we are. It's all done. I've uh, painted and removed the masking for that, that band of uh, colors around the BC deck and you can see all that on here. Turned out real nice. I'm real happy with it. You can see the uh, the uh, Aztec and I did on the top there. And you can also see uh, what I did around the BC deck here on the top and bottom, above and below that dark gray line. Oh, and let me show you something else too, real quick. I, uh, I did some details. The details, here's the details I was talking about. If I can focus, you can see those little details I don't know how much of the detail you can see that I put on these let's see if we can focus this a little bit more I think it's about as focused as it's going to get probably there we go yeah you can see I even put those little little parts on there I'll try to paint those uh those raised areas red right there on that set and then these are just the recessed panel line on those boxes so I got a little extra detail out of it so I'm real happy with that and again you can see those iridescent colors. Now that little nick right there happened when I was uh, trimming the tape around it to match this off. It's actually in the grid line, so that won't be a problem to uh, to fix. I'll mask uh, off the iridescent colors I just did and uh, touch that up, and it'll be good to go. And uh, plus, when I do the other Aztecs here, that'll whatever touch up I do there will blend in with that, and uh, won't be a problem. Uh, but other than that, guys, uh, well, let's take a look at the lighting, too, see how this lighting is showing up. Now, I didn't get to move, I'll point out. I couldn't move the bridge up as far as I wanted to to catch as much of this really bright as possible. Uh, but it does catch the majority of it, at least the part that matters. But uh, I will point out on this, when the video picks it up, it shows a really sharp contrast line right here. And it's it doesn't cut off like that in person. I don't know why the camera shows it, but it kind of fades up a little bit to about right, right here, right about where that USS Enterprise is going to sit. And uh, that works for me because it'll light that a little bit, and then right here is where the NCC-1701A will sit, and that'll be brightly lit. Uh, so that's good enough for me. That'll work. And uh, I may put another 3 millimeter bulb because I do want to see a little more light out of these ports on the side. And I do need to touch up a little bit. When I did that, that dab of uh, <clears throat> perfect plastic putty, I've still got a little bit of a light leak. If you can see it right there. You see that little dot just showed up? I've got a bit of a light leak right there. I'm going to have to put a little more plastic putty in there, and that'll plug that up. The light's on the back. You can see how that's lighting up. I'll have to adjust that LED a little bit. It's showing up bright on one side. Uh, well, it's actually just the camera. It's showing up bright on one side, but it is a little bit bright on one side than the other. So I'll adjust that LED inside there. But uh, that ring is going to light up. Let me see if I can focus on that. It's dark, so I don't know if it's going to focus. Let's see. 
yeah you can see how that ring is going to light up i just got to adjust that led a little bit to the uh to the left of the picture here to uh, evenly light that ring but that's going to light up nice and uh officer's dining lounge is also lighting up nice so yeah so that's all good to go uh the bridge bcd deck and or bc deck and then this first layer here of uh, aztecing around it is all done and uh, i'm really happy with it turned out nice and uh, i think this is a good point to stop at uh, i think i don't think i'm quite at 30 minutes i might be a little over 20 but it's a good stopping point for one it, <laughs> things are going really good right now so let me stop while i'm ahead and uh, when we come back next episode we're gonna, i'm going to work on this uh, impulse deck and get that squared away and then i can work on doing the rest of the main Aztecing around the top of the saucer here. And then from there, we will work on, uh, I've got to get that rec deck. I'm still working on that rec deck a little bit of the time. Got to get that done. That's got to go in, in the side here where the rec deck windows are. I've still got to work those out yet. So that's got to be done. And then we can work on the internal lighting and then uh, the lower saucer and so on. So we'll just work our way down. But uh, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for watching. All the new subscribers, welcome. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're seeing this video, please hit that subscribe button down below. It costs you nothing, but it helps me out tremendously, especially with my sponsors. And as always, speaking of sponsors, big shout out to Cass over at Lake Monster Details for his support, Gus over at GCALS for his support, and Gary over at Mask Design for his support, whose lovely masks we are using now. Um... I will have something to show from Gus uh, on this, uh, some samples anyway. Uh, he's been working on uh, some Aztecs for the 1350. He's been, he did a grayscale set and he's also been working on a multicolored kind of muted uh, set for this. I think I've talked about those before. So uh, he's got some other things he's kind of got on the, on the hot burner right now. But uh, we got a little ways to go yet before we're uh, ready to get to that point on this. And uh, we'll take a look at those when we get them. But uh, again, as always, thank you everybody for watching. Until next time, keep modeling.